Hi friends, welcome to BioGlow. Today we are going to discuss the bacteria Corine Bacterium Diphtheriae. Myself, Mohammed Jaisile, Assistant Professor of Microbiology, Marcus Arts and Science College, Adhavanad. If you like this channel, please subscribe, like and share. History Brittany in 1926 was first to recognize the disease and named it as diphtheria. Corine bacterium was first observed by Klaps in 1883 and first cultivated by Lawfler in 1884 and hence called as Klaps Lawfler bacillus. Diphtheria is also known as Klaps Lawfler bacillus. Rouse and Elsin in 1888 discovered the diphtheria exotoxin. Burin in 1890 described its antitoxin. Then morphology. Corine bacterium diphtheria is a thin slender gram positive bacilli about 3 to 6 micrometer into 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 micrometer in diameter. They are pleomorphic, they are forming granular or uneven staining methods. They are arranged in Chinese letter pattern or cuneiform letter pattern that is an important point in the morphology of Corine bacterium diphtheria, cuneiform arrangement or Chinese letter arrangement. They are forming at various angles it resembles letter of V and L in alphabets. Due to the incomplete separation of the daughter cells after binary fission. So the cuneiform arrangement is due to the incomplete separation of daughter cells after binary fission. They are non-motile organisms and non-capsulated non-sporing organism. They may appear as club shaped because of the presence of metachromatic granules at the ends. Metachromatic granules. Granules consist of polymetaphosphate. They are called metachromatic granules as they take bluish purple color when stained with methylene blue. And they are also known as volatin granules or babes ernst granules. Formation of metachromatic granules is the important property of nice important property of corine bacterium diphtheria. They are always situated at pole of bacilli, therefore called polar bodies. Special stains used for the granules are Albert stain, Neisser stain, and Bonder stain. They represent or granules represent as energy storage. The presence of granules in slender gram positive bacilli helps to distinguish diphtheria bacilli from non pathogenic corine bacteria which lack them. Then, cultural characteristics Corine bacteria and diphtheria are aerobes and facultative anaerobes. The optimum temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, the range is between 15 to 40 degrees Celsius, and the optimum pH is 7.2, and the growth is improved on enriched medias. Then media and colony characteristics. Media on low flow serum slope or growth on low flow serum slope. Corine bacterium diphtheria grows rapidly in 6 to 8 hours on this media and produces colonies which are small, white, circular and glistening with irregular edges. Then next potassium, blood potassium tellurate. It's a selective medium. Potassium tellurate is a selective component in blood potassium tellurate medium. Corine bacterium diphtheria grows slowly on this media producing grey to black colony due to the reduction of potassium tellurate to potassium tellurium. When the potassium tellurate is reduced to potassium tellurium forming grey to black colored colonies. Then biochemical reactions. Fermentation of sugar in his serum media with the production of acid. Pathogenic diphtheria ferment sucrose and mannitol. Starch and glycogen fermentation is one of the important biochemical tests in the case of Corine bacterium diphtheria. Gravis ferment both starch and glycogen. Intermediates and mitis ferment neither starch nor glucose. Gravis, intermediates and mitis are the serotypes of Corine bacterium diphtheria. Diphtheria reduces nitrate and utilizes H2S. Then resistance of Corine bacterium diphtheria. It is readily destroyed by heat at 58 degrees Celsius for 
turn minutes and by disinfectants. It acts as remains virulent in blankets and dust for five weeks. What are the antigens present in Corine bacteria and diphtheria? On its surface, forming protein antigen that is known as K antigen, on polysaccharide O antigen. On the basis of agglutination reaction, Gravis intermediates and mitis are classified into 13, 4, and 40 serotypes respectively. Then pathogenesis or disease causing ability of Corine bacteria and diphtheria. This is the disease development uh, of Corine bacteria and diphtheria. First of all, entry of bacilli through the inhalation or the agency of formates. Then the bacteria to be lodgement and multiplication and forming endot exotoxin leads to local tissue necrosis and forms toxin absorption leads to the condition of toxemia. Then affinity for myocardium nerve endings, adrenal gland and after local tissue necrosis creates further multiplication and exotoxin production and forming diphtheria on pseudomembrane and leads to mechanical obstruction. These are the disease development of Corine bacterium diphtheria. Then clinical features. The Corine bacterium diphtheria causes the disease diphtheria. Different types of diphtheria are the depending on the sites affected. Different, depending on the sites affected, diphtheria is classified into facial, laryngeal, nasal, conjunctival, genital, cutaneous and otitic. First one, facial diphtheria. It's a common type of diphtheria among people. Depending on severity, it's of three types. First one, malignant diphtheria. This form shows severe toxemia and marked adenitis. Adenitis means inflammation of a gland. Usually, it acts as a lymph adenitis. Then circulatory failure and high incident of paralytic complications. Second one, septic. It is characterized by ulceration, cellulitis, and gangrene around pseudomembrane. Cellulitis means inflammation of subcutaneous connective tissue, and gangrene means cell death. Then third one, hemorrhagic. It shows bleeding from membrane, epistaxis, conjunctival hemorrhage, and purpura. Epistaxis means bleeding from nose. Then complications. What are the complications related with Corine bacteria and diphtheria? Asphyxia due to the mechanical obstruction. Asphyxia means body is depressed of oxygen or unconsciousness with lack of oxygen. Then acute circulatory failure, polyneuropathy and post diphtheritic paralysis. Septic complications like pneumonia and otitis media. Then forming diphtheric myocarditis. It may terminate heart failure and leads to death of the patient. Degenerative changes in adrenal gland, kidney and liver cells. The laboratory diagnosis. Specimen. Swab is collected from local lesions or throat swab. Collection of specimen is to be the swab rubbed on membrane or lesion or post pharyngeal wall using tongue depressor. Transportation. It cannot be plated directly or it is moistened with sterile serum to keep bacilli viable. The microscopy. While doing gram staining, gram positive bacilli are formed with the Chinese letter arrangement of forming metachromatic granules. Then Albert stain. Albert stain is mainly used for the identification of metachromatic granules. They are forming green colored bacilli with dark green metallic granules and Chinese letter arrangement is the peculiarity of Corine bacteria and diphtheria. Then immunofluorescence technique. Smears are prepared from sample treated with antibody conjugated with fluorescent tag and used for detection of toxigenic diphtheric bacilli. Then what are the virulence tests used for the uh, identification of Corine bacteria and diphtheria? In the case of in vivo test, two tests are used that is subcutaneous test and intradermal test. Then in vitro test, we can use tissue culture test and LH gel precipitation test. LH gel precipitation is one of the important identification tests for the case of Corine bacteria and diphtheria. First one subcutaneous test. Both emulsion of bacteria infected subcutaneously into two guinea pigs. 
one guinea pig is protected with 500 units of diphtheria and toxin 18 24 hours before the test if strain is virulent unprotected animal day within four days this is the subcutaneous test then intradermal test both emulsion inoculated subcutaneously into two guinea pigs one act as control and should get 500 unit of antitoxin the other gets 50 unit of antitoxin intraperitoneally four hours after the test to prevent death toxigenicity is indicated by inflammatory reaction at the site of injection progressing to necrosis in 48 to 78 hours in test animal control animal does not show any change this is the test of intradermal test then tissue culture test toxicity of diphtheria bacilli can be demonstrated by incorporating the strain in agar overlay of cell culture monolase and toxin diffuses and kills the cell below then elec gel precipitation test one of the important identification test or confirmatory test used for the identification of corine bacteria diphtheria a rectangular strip of filter paper is impregnated with diphtheria and the toxin is placed on surface of 20 percentage holes serum agar when the medium is still fluid when agar sets the test strain is inoculated at right angle position to the paper strip the strain is inoculated at the right angle position on a paper strip then positive and negative control strains are also inoculated on the paper strip then plate is incubated at 37 degrees celsius for 24 to 48 hours and the toxin is produced by bacterial growth diffuses in agar where it meets with antitoxin and produces a line of precipitation we can get a line of precipitation presence of arrowhead shaped precipitates indicates that the strain is toxigenic whereas non toxigenic strains there is no precipitation lines are formed in non toxigenic strains then what are the treatment methods adopted for corine bacteria and diphtheria mainly two types of antibiotics are used that are penicillin and erythromycin the antitoxin administrated in the early stage neutralizes the toxin what are the prophylactic measures to be uh, used for the uh, prevention of corine bacteria and diphtheria mainly active passive and combined immunization methods are used active immunization can provide herd immunity and lead to eradication of the disease combined immunization is the combination of active and passive this is mainly used for the emergency situations then what are active immunization method in active immunization methods we can use a triple bacterial vaccine that is known as diphtheria pertussis and tetanus vaccine that is dpt vaccine schedule of this vaccine is mainly three doses at four to six weeks interval by intramuscular route from six weeks of age then first booster dose at 1.5 years or one and a half years of age and second booster at five to six years of age Diphtheria toxoids are absorbed or formal toxoids. Formal toxoids is used in children as it is more immunogenic. Then passive immunization. It is an emergency measure used only once when susceptible person is exposed to a known case of diphtheria. Subcutaneous administration of 500 to 1000 units of antitoxin or antidiphtheric serum is recommended. Passive immunization is exposed only one case or it's an emergency situation immunization that is known as passive immunization. Then combined immunization. It consists of dose of adsorbotoxoid on one arm and ADS on other arm. It should be followed by complete immunization schedule. Alum containing preparations are preferred over formal toxoid as it is response is unsatisfactory when given with AIDS. If ADS is not unsatisfactory, so alum containing preparations are preferred over formal toxoid in the case of combined immunization techniques. 
so thank you for watching this video please if you like this video please share subscribe and like